What's up guys, welcome back. Now we're gonna talk about the Nintendo Switch Pro mainly in this video, and we're not gonna only talk about the Switch Mini since that is quite frankly the less interesting of the two as far as the technical discussion is concerned and the fans and everything like that on the internet right now. We're gonna be talking mainly about the Switch Pro, but of course there is gonna be most likely two brand new Nintendo Switches coming this year as the Wall Street Journal did report. So if you are a supporter of me and this channel, you know very clearly everything I've been talking about the past year or so with the Switch Pro and the rumors about it and the hints about it and the indications that one is coming, even some leakers who talked about it. And of course we had the rumor from Review Tech USA talking about it as well, being a base model PS4 level in performance, being able to be compatible with PlayStation 5 games for forward compatibility and games in the future so Nintendo can prepare for that next generation coming up. And all throughout that time in the past year or so, I've had countless people constantly tweet at me and leave comments in my videos saying that there will be no Switch Pro and the Switch Pro does not exist. I've seen, I, I think, probably hundreds of comments like that. But of course, I've ignored all of that because I didn't think that was true. I always believed that there was a Switch Pro coming from various things I've heard and things I've found out and rumors and all the information we've gone over on this channel. I never once believed for a second there was not a Switch Pro coming and even more so now than ever, of course. So if you were one of those people who continually kept coming to my channel and tweeting at me telling me that there was no such thing as a Switch Pro, basically I never thought those comments were valid because I know how some of the guys that come to this channel, they basically are there to spread their negativity and hate towards me, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me at all because I just continue on with my business and make my videos and share my thoughts and opinions as clearly as I can on this channel, which I'm sure you guys know who have been following me who are supporters of me. But the chronological outcome of all these things that have happened in the past year or so has been kind of funny in my opinion because first of all we talked about a new switch coming in 2019 and we were only talking about one new nintendo switch at the time and a lot of people were saying no no that would never happen because nintendo just released a switch in 2017 they're not going to make a new version of it so soon in 2019 it's not going to happen that's not happening your new switch speculation is going to be incorrect and then of course we had the wall street journal come out and say in october of 2018 saying that there will be a new nintendo switch coming in the second half of 2019 and then i had people coming back saying oh okay oh, fine there's a new switch coming great but it's not going to be a switch pro it's not going to be anything more powerful it's just going to be a superficial upgrade to the screen and maybe to the build quality of it and that's it and that's not going to be more powerful at all your info on a new more powerful switch is not going to happen that's never going to happen and then of course we kept hearing this continually until the other japanese publication nikkei or nikai whatever they're called came out with the article stating that nintendo will release a switch mini and that would be replacing the 3ds line and then i saw all the same people coming out again saying oh yeah you see it's uh, that's all it was it's just a switch mini there is no switch pro it's just going to be a small switch and that's all they're going to release and there isn't going to be a more powerful switch it's just going to be a switch mini and that's all nintendo's going to do because they don't focus on competing with xbox and playstation they're just going to have a switch mini and maybe just a normal revision to the hardware and that's it yet again i came back and had to explain a few things about it about the different articles from the wall street journal and nikkei talking about how it did seem like two different systems that they were releasing two new switch systems quite possibly in 2019 again i had a lot of other people saying no that's not going to happen even other youtubers saying no that's not going to happen they're just going to have a switch mini switch pro is going to come way down the line and now we have the wall street journal coming out and saying yes there will be two brand new nintendo switch models there will be a switch mini focused on the cheaper option for casual gamers and there will be a enhanced nintendo switch targeted at avid gamers enthusiasts basically even though it won't be as powerful as the playstation 4 pro and xbox one x which is interesting they would say that and quite possibly that gives a hint at where the specs level could be since why would you compare the playstation 4 pro and xbox one x to this new nintendo switch it makes no sense to do that unless the system was quite possibly in the ballpark of those consoles not saying necessarily on the same level but quite possibly in the ballpark as far as PlayStation 4 level is concerned. They didn't say anything about the system not being as powerful as PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, did they? They said PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X. Xbox One X is the most powerful home console on the market currently. So that was very clear that they said that in the Wall Street Journal. Obviously that's not a mistake. They very clearly said those enhanced versions of those consoles. They didn't talk about the original models. And yet again they said that this new Nintendo Switch is targeting 
avid gamers. So yes, that does mean that this Nintendo Switch is gonna be more powerful and enhanced than the original version of the console. Uchizuki from the Wall Street Journal also tweeted out some information regarding this. He said in my latest on new Nintendo Switch coming as early as this summer, there will be two models and people who've seen them has said the designs of the new devices are different from the original and you'll be surprised. All right, so if it's just a enhanced Nintendo Switch from the original and that's all it is as far as adding new features and you know better graphics, then probably you wouldn't be surprised by that, would you? That's kind of like what you would be expected. So there's some surprises about these consoles that Nintendo, of course, is going to reveal at a later time that quite possibly could be even more interesting. But again, the Switch Pro model, from what we're talking about here, is targeting the core gamer, the avid gamers. So basically the gamers who want to play your Call of Duties, your Tomb Raiders, your Shakiro Shadows Dies Twice, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Devil May Cry 5, those type of games, those are the avid quote unquote gamers, the gamers who want to play all the games. Nintendo is targeting those players and they're comparing it not to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they're comparing it to the PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X. So you've got to think that Nintendo quite possibly has a substantially more powerful Nintendo Switch coming that can play the latest and greatest to satisfy the avid gamer, the core gamer. Now you may say, hey, well, the Nintendo Switch already supports core gamers on their system on their current model. Now that is true, by the way, but a lot of those games are old ports from Xbox 360 and remasters, and a lot of them are also, of course, Nintendo first party games. The Nintendo Switch is still missing quite a bit of this AAA third party support from all these developers, especially from the new games coming out in 2019. We've already mentioned a lot of them just now. You know, like I said, some of the best games have already been released this year. You got Kingdom Hearts 3, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Devil May Cry 5, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, The Division 2, Metro Exodus, Dead or Alive 6. The list goes on and on and on. These games have all been released in 2019 already and they're not on the Nintendo Switch. What are those games targeted at? I'm gonna ask you guys there in the comment section, what are those games I just mentioned? Who are they targeted at? Are they targeted at the casual gamer? No, they're targeted at the avid gamers, exactly what they say here in this article. So I do think this does mean that this new Nintendo Switch will be getting more of these type of games to support the avid gamer who wants to play these games on a Nintendo system that they're not getting right now. And this would be a big change and quite possibly a surprise to a lot of fans as well. Like it brings out here in the article that fans could be surprised at just how many of these new games from AAA third party that this new Switch is getting. And I know a lot of people are going to say the same thing over and over again that Nintendo will not do this. They will not segregate their audience like that. But I have to disagree because they've done it before. Like we talked about in my live stream, the new Nintendo 3DS has over 50 different exclusive games on the console. The DSi had the entire DSi shop, which was hundreds of games exclusive to that console. Even the Game Boy Color had exclusive games that were not on the original Game Boy. I think over 100 of them at least. This is no different for Nintendo. And of course, this has nothing to do with Nintendo being like Sony in the PlayStation 4 Pro. There was also a comment by Muchizuki from the Wall Street Journal about that as well about it being compared to the PlayStation 4 Pro. He said, you would be wrong to think the enhanced version is similar to what Sony did with the PS4 Pro, and the other is just a cheap alternative that looks very similar to some past handheld machines, say the PlayStation Vita. He said, you'll be wrong to think that. I know some people got confused by that. So what would be similar to what Sony did with PS4 Pro and PlayStation 4? Well, that is that they forced all games to be compatible with the original PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro. That is what would be something similar that Nintendo would be doing with the Switch and Switch Pro. But he's saying here that you would be wrong to think that the enhanced version of the Switch is gonna be similar to what Sony did with the PS4 Pro. And the thing to keep in mind here is the context of this information, of what they just talked about with the Switch Pro being for avid gamers and then comparing it with the PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X in the same sentence. You see what I'm saying here? So they didn't compare it to the PlayStation 4, they didn't compare it to the Xbox One, and then they said you would be wrong to think that they're just doing some PlayStation to PlayStation 4 Pro enhanced version. So it's kind of interesting to think about, huh? Because the PlayStation 5 is coming out, and if Nintendo wants to get third-party support from PlayStation 5, 
it's going to have to have a system that can run those games and of course the games from PlayStation 4 currently with no problem. So PlayStation 4 needs to be doable completely by the time PlayStation 5 comes out, right? At least for a Nintendo console. So you got to think that this type of upgrade is going to enable that. And the thought of the fan being left behind, the ones who have the current Nintendo Switch, you got to remember this guys very clearly, okay? You were not going to get any of these games either way on the current version of the Nintendo Switch. Do you hear what I'm saying here? So either way, you're not going to get Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, any Final Fantasy brand new games on the current Nintendo Switch as it stands right now. So if a brand new Nintendo Switch comes out that can run those games and it gets those games, you are not going to get those games anyway. So better to have those games at all than to not have those games at all. You see what I'm saying here? So no, no one's going to get left behind because developers are simply not going to put those games on the current Nintendo Switch. And going into 2020 when the PlayStation 5 comes out, that's going to be even more of the case if there is no new enhanced Nintendo Switch on the market. And this is exactly what Nintendo looks like they're doing right now to prepare for that coming generation because the Switch, like I talked about on the recent live stream I had, the Switch came out at a weird time towards the latter half of the PlayStation 4 generation in 2017. It was already late to the party and it had a stock chip that was already two years old by the time it came out. So this upgrade was going to happen either way by Nintendo at some point. Of course, the PlayStation 5 comes out next year, so what better time than to do it now while that system is not out yet so they can get prepared and get the developer support they need, AAA developer support, because why? Well, because AAA games make the most amount of revenue on the market out of anything over anything else in the video game industry. All those games I mentioned make millions and millions and millions of dollars of revenue and profit for these companies. So for Nintendo to miss out on those games going into the next generation, Nintendo would miss out on all those royalties that those companies would be bringing in if they're able to put their games on the Nintendo Switch or Switch Pro at that time. So it's all about making that money, it's all about preparing for the future, and the current user of the Nintendo Switch is not going to get left behind because all the same games are going to run on the new Nintendo Switch and Switch Pro, of course, but these new games for PlayStation 5 quite possibly will not be running on the original Nintendo Switch. But does that mean you're going to get left behind? No, because Nintendo has to do something to get those games to run, and they're going to have to release new hardware to do it. It's just as simple as that. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this topic. I know it's a hot topic and we're going to continue to talk about it as things get clearer and clearer, as we get closer and closer to Nintendo reaction revealing the Switch Pro. I think you and I, the fans out there, can come closer to an agreement on this aspect of it. I hope you guys can grasp what I'm trying to say about this and understand for yourself and see the logic and reasoning behind it as to why Nintendo would do this to prepare for the next generation. All right, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.